All right, so you just downloaded the game. You decide the realm you're going to play, the class, you're ready to learn the basics. Let's go. Pick the realm. Click an empty slot. Oh, first hit options down at the bottom. You need to change the resolution, window to full screen, and the monitor you're playing on. That should be the only ones that matter right now. Except Big empty slot, hit create, type your character name, pick the class, pick gender, oh it's Valkyrie, so <laughs> Valkyrie is gender locked on this, I was like, why can't I go male, so you can go male, female, hit continue, customize your character, you can click the arrows, drag it, I don't know what this locks for, I don't know why you would ever lock a stat, and hit random, Oh, if you random, I guess. And so I never knew these existed. All right, so we're going to be a short dwarf, randomized, whatever. On dwarves, I think you you have to have an eye patch. It's like a requirement. Don't ask me why. See how that is asked? Eye patch. So hit continue. So now we got our character made. Oh, also, you see this attributes button? Just hit optimize. You can reset it, put whatever you want later on. It's not that important right now. So just hit optimize, hit done. Click your character, hit play. All right, so we loaded in. You'll see your interface is all over the place. Hold Alt and hit Q. You should see this window pop up. You don't look for it on your screen it's somewhere you can move it by clicking this double arrow in the top left corner or you can hold shift and left click anywhere on the window and i'll move it it works with any window moving this way so we're gonna hit keyboard so i went and set up these beforehand just copied it exactly like it is and then as you get better at the game, you can customize it to your preference. So start off, hit this WASD default, left click it a few times, it'll have a preset. And then when you're setting these keys up, you see it says action key. You want to click key, it'll turn it blue, and then you can change it to whatever you'd want. So whatever key you hit next, to move forward, you should hit the key. So we're going to put it back to W. So copy these exactly like it is. Pause the video if you have to. Also, you'll see some say no key or unset. It's the same thing. To do that, you click the action text right here. And then you hit clear key. So copy these. Remember, hit the key. All right, and once you have all these fixed, you might have this one messed up. So mouse look, click it, right click on the mouse, mouse pan, left click it, left click. So these are done, accept. So now our hotkeys are good. You can close the command window, it's Alt K. We can hit the X, that was in the top right. You can close this window. You can close this window by clicking the hand. The map, if the map is too big, you can move it wherever you want, or you can just close it by hitting M. So you can close this window and you can close this window. I don't need this window. If you need it, put it wherever you want it. If you don't, close it. Now, I'm going to give you like a basic setup. You can change this later, but just use this for right now. So if you hit Shift-C, 
It changes the size of your compass. Disappears it. Put it like right under your character for now. And then this is your status window. Remember shift left click move it right there. It's got your health as your character name. Your health is the red bar. Green is endurance endo and yellow is power. This is experience bar. If you left click the experience bar, it goes to round points, which is your PVP level kind of and champion is like level 50 end game experience level. So click it to it says XP and you'll notice the zero and empty bar. That's just your target. So if I click this person, I'll have their name. You'll see these plus 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 purple. So that's the highest tier. It means this, your target is so high above your level. You don't ever want to fight. It would just destroy you one on one. Then it, so it goes purple, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, gray. Yellow means even. And then the other ones are just above or below. Gray means it's so far under your level, you get no experience or loot for killing it. So that's how it's called conning. Consider enemies. So when you con them, that's what they're talking about. So we got status bar. And then we're going to move the group window right here. It's just going to have, if you're in a group, we'll have their names, their health, you know, status is displayed. So if you hit shift P, your performance meter will grow in size or disappear. And this just tells you if you're lagging. If it's green, it means you're good. If it's red, yellow, it means you're lagging. Going link dead, LD. So these three are your hot bars. The first one is your primary. And you see it says modifier, none. So if I hit one, Whatever's on the primary bar is going to happen. So it says attack command means my character is going to go into auto attack, but I do not have a weapon equipped is what this window is saying, the combat window. So if I hit I, it'll open up my inventory and I'll have a weapon in the second slot. So we're going to left click the weapon, hold it over your character and left click again, and it'll put it in the correct slot. You're also going to move the spine stone to the last slot by clicking the bag, the fifth bag, put it at the very bottom. Click the first bag to go to the first window. So we have weapon equipped now. So if we hit one, the attack command should work. So our character will attack any enemies we have target in melee range now. You can tell by the red outline on your status bar and the stance of your character. So if you hit one again, turns off auto attack, but the auto Mac, the auto attack hotkey we have is shift a, so it'll do the same thing. So you can remove this by holding shift and right clicking. Second window it has sprint right here. So if I hit one, it goes to the primary hotbar. So the secondary hotbar, you see it says modifier alt. So to sprint, I have to hold down alt and hit one. See, I got a buff at the top saying I'm sprinting. So when my character runs now, I lose endurance, but I run faster because I'm sprinting. If I hold alt, hit one again, turns off sprint. I'm not losing endurance anymore because I'm not sprinting. Combat text tells I'm, tells me I'm not, and that's how that works. So sprinting is a really important function of the game. I have it hotkeyed to my mouse. You're going to be using this key a lot, so if you can't put it on your mouse, I'll put it on like V. Just somewhere you're able to easily access. So that's how sprint works. We have it hotkeyed so we can remove it from the bar by shift right clicking. Stick and face are very important in this game. 
and to face you're gonna hit you're gonna have your target and you're gonna hit F and to stick you're gonna hit R if the targets too far away you can't stick them so you have to be kind of close and if you hit R key you stick them so wherever they go your character will follow them and they will be in melee range if you're able to keep up with them so you can remove those the third bar I like to have buffs and like usable items so I don't need to really look at it so if you click the window in the top right or the little plus sign it changes the orientation of it you can have it vertical shift left click put it in the corner you can leave it there for now shift left click move the primary bar have the secondary under it if you ever don't know which bar is which you can just put your mouse over it it tells you the modifier so the combat window we can put it right here for now if you right click it you hit message channel anything with a check in it is being displayed in this window you can click click the message and you can change the color and you can check or uncheck to control whether it's displayed or not so that's how that works you can change the the window alpha which is like the background you change the font alpha or it fades in and out the size so set that up you can add new windows delete rename which kind of like this one did already so this is your chat window it's got your main tab you can make it bigger by left clicking the top right corner and move it around you can shift click move it corner make it smaller you can same thing as the combat window same functions so that's how that works so now your interface is set up you got your your keys configured now we can start playing a little bit so this day logo above the character it means it's a quest giver so you're gonna right click hit the set if you hit the j key it opened up your quest log quest journal so ignore task for right now it's not really important click the second one it's the quest we just began so it says go north east and kill five wild boar if you hit m for map you'll get this window so right now I'm in a town. When you're in a town, it opens up a town map. So it's really small and it's not that helpful. So when I go out of the town, it will open up a bigger map of the area and it'll show a red dot where the enemy I need to kill is. So where these wild boars are at. So the yellow dot is the quest giver. This purple arrow is me and the direction I'm going. There's some water down here. I just want to show you something with water real quick. So if you sprint, character will run faster. So in water, your character won't go down. Even if you're looking at the wind, the water, you need the down hotkey we set up earlier. So if you hold shift and space, our character will go down now. And if you hold space, we go up. And you can move just like you do on land. And strafe, back and forth, and up and down. See, my character's holding the breath. This goes to full. My character will slowly drown. And you will die. So, we left the town. So, if you have follow location on, the map will change depending on when your character is. So, that's usually good to have. Sound description. Show quest givers you want on zone description, kind of pointless. So we're going to go to the red dot and we're going to look for five wild boars to kill. So that's another player. He's yellow, so it means same level. So level one, you want to kill blue enemies. Yellow are kind of hard because we have no gear. 
nothing really. So if you're a melee character, let's go over this top right part real quick. So close these other windows. So this is your attributes window. The only thing that matters right now is your level. All this other stuff, hit points. This weapon skill damage is not really important right now. These are your stats, your resist. We'll go over those later when they actually matter a lot more. This is your inventory. This is your specialization. So it tells you what you can train in. Your abilities you have. If it has an icon in the left, like sprint, you can drag it to a window. And it's an active ability if it has an icon. This is crafting stuff. I don't really craft, so I can't tell you much about that. So these are combat styles. If you go to inventory, my character has an axe. So whatever weapon you use is the style you need to use. So we go to axe. We're going to left click it. Bring it on your primary bar. Put it at slot one. So if you're a melee character, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to go up to the enemy. You're going to hit R, stick them. Wherever they go, you will follow. And you're going to hit one. So when you hit a style, your character will automatically go into auto attack. It should be an easy fight. So we killed the boar. If you go to inventory, I. If you got any new drops, you can just equip it by dropping it on top of your character. So I have a two hand axe. Remember you can put it top. So two hands. So. The con on gear works just like enemies. Red means it's quite a few levels above. See the training axe at level one, so it's yellow. This is red, so it's like level three, I'm guessing. So if I right click it, it'll bring up this window. It tells me what kind of weapon. It's an axe slash damage, damage per second, the attack speed, how much it weighs, the condition, durability, quality, which is really important. The higher quality, the more damage. Bonus is like two hit. It's not really important right now. And if it's one hand, two hand, usable on left hand. So if you hit shift I, it's going to bring up another window. And these are going to be the stats. So on this server, it says it's a unique object world drop from normal enemies on the level four required player level utility is like the more utility the more bonuses it has on it so the mag magical bonuses it's got hit points strength con melee weapon skills this stuff just means it has a proc on it it's a damage to the target does five damage to heat so whenever i hit I don't know the exact percent, but there's going to be a chance for a proc to go off. So that's how gear works. We'll go over this more later when you're better at understanding the game. So that's styles. And if you're a magic user, you're going to click magic spells and you're going to click these tabs. And these are going to be your spells. If you put your mouse over it, a tool tip will show up as it'll give you a description of everything you need to know. And if you right click it, it's just the same information. So left click it, put it on your hotbar. I'm going to put it on hotbar two. So I need to hop, hit alt one to cast it. So what you should do is you hit F to face your target. So wherever it goes, you'll be looking at them. You're going to hold alt and you're going to hit one. If you hit the key again, it says you're casting a spell and you'll cast it as a follow up. So what that means is as soon as the spell is finished casting, you're immediately going to cast whatever spell you hit when that spell is done. So you just want to mash it. So I'm just hitting Alt-1, Alt-1. So if you get hit 
and you're far enough into the cast, your character will finish casting the spell. If they hit you too early into the cast, then you won't be able to finish casting. In this game, casters are very vulnerable to melee. You can't cast while being hit in melee. So I'm going to hit him. So I'm going to try to cast. Okay. <laughs> so I guess say so resistant. See, here's what I want to show you. Wild boar attacks you and your spells interrupted. So there's a, there's a there's a lot more to it, but the simple version is if you're fighting something your level and they're in melee, you shouldn't be able to cast. You should think that way. There is like a, a formula to it. If something is lower level, then you'll still be able to cast if your stats are higher. But it's like very complicated. So just think of it this way. If you're fighting something and it's hitting you in melee, you shouldn't be able to cast. There is an exception where you get a skill as a caster called quick cast. And it'll show up in abilities. And what you do is you, you hit quick cast and then you cast your spell. So even if something is on you in melee, you will be able to cast the spell and it won't stop you. But yeah, so yellow mobs are kind of hard at level one. That's why I'm not fighting them. But if I was to fight a yellow mob and I'm trying to cast, it will interrupt me. I'll just show you. So I'm going to try to cast. See, it says interrupted. So yeah, I won't ever be able to cast on this guy because he's my level. So remember sprinting? Enemies can't sprint. So if you're sprinting, you can usually outrun enemies. So this enemy won't ever catch me. Eventually, if you run for like 30 seconds, the enemy will just quit chasing. However long that was. And guards will attack enemies if they get too close. So we nuked it. So it's following me. There's a guard right here. Guards are really high level. So he'll one shot this. If a guard kills an enemy, you get no experience, no loot, anything at all. It's just gone. All right. So if we hit J, we click this. We need to kill one more boar. When you're doing this quest, kill blues. They're a lot easier than yellows. So we leveled up and we finished the quest. When we leveled up, level goes up, hit points go up. Sometimes you get stats. Um, if you got inventory, equip it. We got two specialization points from leveling up. You might have an ability sometimes. So check abilities. And you might have new spells, so check spells. Okay, now that we leveled up, type hit enter slash macro space train, all caps, space slash train. You're going to hit enter. So we created a train macro. So put it on the third hot bar. At zero so hit control zero or click it now we have the training window open up if you move it goes away for some reason so we leveled up so we got two specialization points available and these these are your melee so when you level up melee Weapons, you get styles. So if I were to put a point in axe, I would get this style. And it tells you what it does. Just like the tool tip. These aren't really important right now. The only thing you need to know if it has like a condition to hit from the side, back, front, after a parry, stuff like that. You can click these arrows 
to increase the train or you can grab the slider and I'll show you if you train 50 acts what you would get and these these show you all the styles you can right click them see what they do like see how this one it says opening side to the target that's what I was talking about earlier shield shield you get shield styles and other stuff usually you stun people when you hit them with your shield and it's got guard engage protect we'll go over those some other time parry you get nothing from parry it just increases your chance to parry and then store calling is the casting line for things so if i Put it at 50, it shows me every Thane spell. So it's at 1 right now. If I put it at 2, this is what I'll gain. So this is a buff. So I'm going to hit, see how it's green? I'm going to hit train. If you mess up on training, you have to respec all. But it says you must be speaking to a trainer to respec. So you need to go into town, find your trainer. So I'm a Thane, so I would look for a, a Thane trainer and I would click him. See, he's a bone dancer, but same concept. So I would click my trainer, hit respec all, and then it would go back to however many I have. I lost nothing. So don't worry if you ever misspec something. So when we trained, we got this new spell. So it's a buff, so we'll put on third bar. And it says targets, constitution, and strength are increased by 16. So we're going to cast that. You don't need a target for it because it's self only. So, so it's a 16 increase. But if you look at buffs and debuffs, it only increased it by 3. That's because every level you have a buff cap. So at level 2, it looks like the buff cap is 3. So you're only going to get 3 out of 16. Sometimes you want to remove buffs. To do that, you're going to shift, right click, and it removes it. That's kind of important later, but it's very rare you want to remove buffs. So I'm going to cast it again. All right, so we're going to, so you trained, you leveled up, we killed the five boars, now it's saying go back to the quest giver, so we're going to hit the M key, and we're going to go to the quest giver, you can sprint to run faster. So speak with. So you can just read this, it tells you what the quest is telling you to do. It says go northeast, kill five up. Oh, that's what we just did. Speak with this person. So this is who they're talking about. So we got this window. You click on the bottom, you can expand it. So it's just some information about battlegrounds, dungeons, questing zones, which is what we're doing right now. It tells you where to go at different levels. So you can close that. It says speak to the quartermaster. So it's saying. So if, it, if the character is like if the text is white, that means you can use it. Like I can't, you see how this is gray? It means I can't use it. So for right now, all you need to know is buy the armor with the highest absorb you can get. So if you're able to wear plate, buy plate. If you wear chain or scale, get that. Then reinforced or studded, then leather, then cloth. So my character can use chain armor. So 
by chain by all the chain pieces if your character uses studded by the armor whatever armor you need casters cloth stealthers leather light tanks studded archers go to the second page by the weapon so two hand I like two hand weapons buy your two hand so yeah, buy whatever you need it's going to be different for every character you'll see it says 3s adc so if you look over here you got copper silver gold platinum and then mithril and it's like a hundred every time goes over i've never had a mithril it's like for hardcore farmers you're usually just gonna have a few plot late game all right so we got armor we did the quest hit j it says return to this guy so when it's blue it means it's time to collect the reward it's saying I'm going to get a whole level experience, so should level me up. We get a new quest. Learn about channelers. And then this is, this is another kill quest, just like the first one we did. So you can keep doing these all the way to 50 throughout different zones. Right now we're going to do the second quest. So if you hit tilde, your character will auto run. We're going to go to this red dot where the channeler is. Is that a uh, thing? So the yellow one is the quest giver. So if you die in this game at higher levels, you lose con, sometimes experience if you're not max level and you'll get a debuff so if you click a healer right click you lose the debuff which is like five minutes long it's temporary and you'll lose permanent constitution unless you come to the healer to recover it so yeah it's temporary but Unless you go to a healer, you'll never get it back. So you're going to right click a healer. It's going to ask you to pay some amount of money. You pay them, you get all your con back. So there's no permanent loss. Every town will have a scald, a bard, or a minstrel. You right click them, you get a speed buff. So you run faster. If you get hit or you hit something, this buff goes away. So you want to avoid combat to keep the buff. You can sprint and they stack so you'll run even faster. All right, so we click the channeler like this quest says. So now I can return to the quest giver. See how it turned blue to collect a reward. But I am going to go. So these are all towns. If you click left click them, you'll teleport to them. This is housing, which is like the trade market and your own personal stash to hold stuff. We're going to click battlegrounds. So it teleported us to a battleground. I'm at the Midgard portal keep right now. This is the Hibernia portal key and this is the Albion portal key. It's where you port it into the zone. We always talk about these like HPK, APK, MPK. This is the center key. It's neutral, but any realm can claim it. You have to kill the Lord inside the key. Usually it takes a small group in battlegrounds and each battleground has a quest giver. So you can get a whole bunch of quests. They're called Dauntless Quests. You can 
drag this out and it's just kill enemies return to him you see these red dots those are where the enemies are located so we're gonna go out here so if you type slash battlegrounds it's got a list of every battleground it tells you the levels the highest realm rank which is like your pvp level and how many players are in that battleground and then it who owns the center keep so albion owns the center keep i'm the only guy here so i'm just going to run also there's a hastener at the portal keep and it gives you this speed around buff we got earlier and every keep in RVR has them, I believe. So there's neutral enemies out here. One thing you want to see, if they're around your level and if they're aggressive. If they're aggressive, they will attack if you get too close. Keeps have archers on top of the wall. See, I got this one clicked right here. It's same level. And if I get too close, it'll shoot me and I'll lose the speed buff. So we don't want that. Also the torch. I don't know if I talk about that. Shift T. It'll make the light on and off. In RVR, you usually want this off because the enemies can see you a lot easier if you have your torch on. So you try to turn it off. It doesn't matter that much, but whatever so every portal keep has guards super op so as a mid guard i'll never be able to go inside apk or hpk and if i get too close the guards will swarm me and i'm gonna get one shot so he hit me for 20,000 damage. I think a max level character, the most you'll see is like 3k. So you're never gonna survive that. So when you die in RVR, there's like no loss. And your choice is to release, release city, bind, and house. This will bring you to your house. This will bring you to a bind stone. This is your city your capital and then this will bring me back to the Midgard portal keep so we're gonna do city so this is the main city for Midgard it's got count vault here a bunch of merchants a bunch of end game merchants and players around Got a vault keeper, you can keep items in your vault. And it's got teleporter. Alright, that's it for this video. You should have your interface set up. You should know how to play, how to move around. And in future videos, we'll go over more advanced stats and concepts. Good luck everybody. You can hit slash Q to quit if you ever need to do that. All right, two things I want to show you real quick. First, if you try casting a spell and it won't cast, you probably need a ground target. To do this, find your ground target key, press it, you'll get this cursor, and whatever you click, that is now your ground target. Also, to shoot a bow, you need to have a bow equipped. So we're going to do C. We have our melee weapon out. I'm going to hit C. Now I have my bow out. Click your target. F for face. And then you can see all your arrows abilities here. So you have your target. You hit Hit your key, you'll see it prepare and then it'll automatically fire. And you can click it again to cue it again. 
And then let's see, you got a melee. Auto attack it down. And that's how you use a bow.